Pull up. Pull up. What's up, YouTube? Check out my new ride. It's uh, sleek. It's awesome. It's Greek. You can tell by the flag on the tail. And therefore, democratic. By the way, thanks, guys, for that democracy thing. Pretty rad. Anyway, uh, multinational jet fighter, the F-16. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. And um, not too hard to learn, as it turns out, if you're used to flight sims. So uh, to continue that process, I'm going to try the red flag campaign. And you can watch the first mission here. Spoiler alert, they're spoilers. And I make a ton of mistakes, which hopefully you can learn from. And uh, I'll talk more about them as I make them. So sit back and relax. I'll try to edit down a lot of the uh, transit times for you guys. And enjoy. Alright, so I figure I will uh, try to get super cozy with the, uh, the F-16, the Viper, because... Uh, I'll talk about it while we're flying. I'm going to start the Red Flag campaign, and uh, spoiler alert if you don't want spoilers for the Red Flag campaign, uh, maybe watch a different video. Um, from what I've seen from these Red Flags though, they're pretty uh, kind of samey. Uh, not a lot of briefing material here, but uh, looks like we got, we take it off from Nellis, <coughs> and since we're blue side, we're going to be um, and through the Sally Corridor up to the east. Uh, waypoint 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we'll turn west at waypoint 5, it's like an initial point at uh, waypoint 8, waypoint 9, somewhere between 8 and 9 we're going to have our, no wait, Marshall, initial, target, initial point, waypoint 9, 10 will be our target, and then egress east, 11, 12, 13, and we can all count the way back to Nellis. Um, always, you know, oh, which one's better? Um, the expensive. And so they beefed that up a little bit uh, with McDonnell Douglas, developed the FA-18 Hornet, and the rest is history, and they're both still flying in some, some form or another. I think it's pretty great that um, airframes and designs from, you know, uh, the... 70s, you know, the, the hotness from uh, the mid 70s is still uh, still flying, still being developed. The, uh, yeah, jeez. F 15 EX is coming out. And uh, looks pretty pretty cool. Um, I, I kind of like that. I, I mean, as long as it's relevant and survivable and whatever, then, uh, you know, great. You know, I've used a computer before. You couldn't tell from watching, though. Let me fix this. Right, so, as I was saying, I think it's cool. Um, I miss the Tomcat, of course. I think most of us do. Uh, any aviation fan worth anything is going to be like, yeah. Even if, you know, you, you may not admit it at first. Maybe you're a Hornet person at heart. Maybe you're in a different service. The uh, F-14 has a coolness factor had a coolness factor and a draw and an allure that uh, a lot of the other planes can only scratch at um, all right so this mission uh, we're gonna start as all good campaigns should by degrading their IADs um, these F-16s that we're flying are armed with two uh, GBU-12s, two laser guided bombs, two AMRAMs, and two 9Xs and uh, we're gonna try and hit that fansong radar. We're trying. Our target is the uh, search radar, which would be easy to spot on the RWR, one would assume. So let's get this startup started. Battery, start two. Frame rate's taking a shit, but you know, that's just how it is. Let's get our electronics on. 
start an alignment. Get that HUD on. Turn on the HMD. Crack the engine open. So I don't forget what we, uh, yeah, I forgot something. Last this thing down, turn all this shit on. Turn that on. It's alive! I think there's a there's an HMD alignment tool here. Uh, so we're gonna go to the list. We're gonna go to Bingo Bango uh, Misc Laser. What do we got? Dumber down. Oh come on. Yeah, you know what, I think uh, the targeting pod just isn't warmed up yet. Oops, 688. No, we're not doing the attack sub here. Uh, one, six. Let's clear it. All right. Maybe we've got to wait a little while. Seat not armed. So what's he got like? Four GBUs, two Mavs, two rocket pods. Yeah, that's a lot of shit. Um, The radio works. Electrical system. What, what, what's the problem here? Raw main power. I think we're good. All right, let's get our nose wheel steering on. Request Swiggy Guinness. Three right. Let's make our heading. And so let's. Uh, I 
L39s, huh? So we're going to be heading out, taking a left, runway three right, and heading off to the uh, northeast. Did I mention it's time for a new computer? My system I built in 20, 2013, 2014. <laughs> Shit, that's almost like 10 years old. That's some perspective. I uh, built this under the Obama administration. <laughs> oh boy. Bingo, bango. Um, incidentally, I said bingo, bango twice this mission. Um, a lot of you are probably going to realize that's Rick and Morty. Uh, I do like that show, but uh, you know, I do like to think I'm not one of the uh, more obsessive fans. I just like watching it; it makes me laugh. It's ridiculous. There's that episode where, oh, uh, what do they call him? Uh, Scuzz Bucket or Scuzz Fuzz something or other? Right. So that, they dug deep for that one. That is a reference to, uh, let's focus on business here. Wow. There's a famous picture of an F-16. Thunderbirds F-16. Uh, kind of on the bottom end of a loop, if I understand correctly, uh, with the pilot ejecting. Because that guy did not do this. If I, uh, if I understand correctly. Right, so fuzz bucket. So in the 80s, there were a lot of uh, made-for-TV movies for kids. One of them, I think it was called, was it, called, was it fuzz bucket or scuzz bucket or something like that? Right, so it was kind of like an attempt at making an E.T.-like movie with like a kid with an imaginary friend that his family didn't see and like came from a different world or whatever. And uh, it was kind of creepy looking. I actually saw that movie. It played once, and I think that's the only time it's ever been played. So if you've seen that movie, more than once, chances are pretty good. It's because your family recorded it for you on VCR, or you know maybe you were savvy enough to do that, and um, you have a movie called Fuzz Bucket, and um, it didn't do well. Um, I think that was the last anybody ever heard of it, but clearly. Um, the Rick and Morty crew saw the movie at least once and uh, thought it'd be fun to, <laughs> to add it to the show. To kind of make fun of it. Um, I do remember like the, the Fuzzbucket character, uh, the little costume puppet character that the kid was friends with. Kind of, even back then, kind of creeped me out a little. So eight miles out from waypoint one, we'll arrive there in about one minute. Seven miles. Yeah, you guys can read a HUD, right? You guys can read a HUD. Questions, Bueller. All right. Uh, so this is B. I think that's bar barometer is what's feeding our altitude. Our morning altitude is 500. We're 50, 55 seconds away from our current waypoint, which is 001. It is five miles away. That's that. Oh, sorry about the mic bump. And the, uh, something stuck in my eye. 
So I'm going to drop the speed down so I'll give my flight a chance to catch up without AI cruising around in a full burner. One. What's up, buddy? Waypoint two. HQ-7 sounds like a good strafing target. Right, so I was going to talk about the Hornet versus the, uh, the Viper. The topic du jour, or decades. The topic du damn near half a century. So, um, right, 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 right. So let's get back to that, because we got a while, and i got to talk about something. So, um, so I'm, uh, been in and out of the Hornet since it came out in DCS, and I gotta say, um, it's been a couple years. But I did a I did a video um, some time back when the Hornet came out, and I was learning it. Uh, it wasn't when I was still living in Canada, actually. Um, comparing the uh, Hornet to the F-16. Now, at the time, the F-16 wasn't out in DCS, and I was like, "Hey, look, this is just preliminary. Just trying to compare the AI F-16 versus the Hornet and see." You know, kind of who comes out on top, and I think I made the comment, like, I feel like the Hornet can handle anything. That still applies. Um, <clears throat> I feel like that. Anytime I hop in the Hornet, I'm like, okay, whatever whatever comes, I got it. I can do that. I can handle it. Um, yeah, I've got the weaponry, I've got the sensors, and I've got the uh, performance in the jet to, to handle it. And I feel the same in the, the F-16, too. It's just a different feel. Um, the big... I mean... I'm going to leave the discussion about um, fuel consumption and range. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, sustained versus instantaneous turn performance. The respective flyby wire uh, restrictions on each jet. Um, who can t pull how many Gs for how long? And, you know, th thrust to weight ratios. And at what altitude? And corner speeds and high alpha performance and low speed performance and high speed performance and acceleration and all that other good stuff. I'm going to leave that, leave that to other folks. I want to talk about interface, believe it or not. Um, and the reason for that is I can look at a sheet. Any of you can go to Google and look up that other shit, right? Um, you know, I can see who's faster, who can turn tighter for longer, and, you know, all that other, who can carry more weapons and on what hard points. Right? It's all, uh... I like to talk about the, the stuff that you can't just look up. <clears throat> and this is all, like I said, don't make the dangerous mistake of thinking you know what it's like to fly an F-16 if you don't actually do that. Or a Hornet, or really anything. Um, I've had enough hand, hands-on time in actual aircraft to know I, I don't know shit. Um... And when it comes to aircraft like this, I definitely don't know shit. Uh, what we know from DCS is basically academics, and uh, it's as real as we can get our hands on. But I, I get the impression that if I tried to do this IRL, first off, I would get in deep shit. 
uh, for not being uh, really allowed to do that. But uh, more than that, um, I'd probably die, you know? Like, there's just all these little odds and ends, these shortcuts that we take in DCS. Um, and not to mention that a lot of our bodies, like, we're just not really... There's a the reason there's physical uh, limits on who can do this kind of stuff, right? And not all of us are in shape or have the right conditioning for it. Uh, I'd probably black out at, like, what, 3Gs or something stupid like that? Who knows? Um, I mean, I'm in okay shape, you know, no lie. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. <sighs> Rant ended. So, um, Hornet versus F-16, right? So, come in, I want to say, preface this by saying most of us in DCS, if we've been around for a while, we almost definitely have the Warthog, right? Because that was the first, like, full-featured combat jet we were able to get our hands on. If I remember right, it was, like, Black Shark, A-10, and uh, uh, P-51, if I remember. Uh, those, those were the first, like, full-fit LA modules, right? So, I gotta say, the transition, if you're used to the HOTAS bindings and the MFDs, how they work and feel from the... Uh, from the A-10, this is a pretty easy transition. It, don't stick with muscle memory, because it'll screw you up. Because uh, they're different enough to where, you know, if you're going off muscle memory and just doing what you would have done in the hog, it'll probably jack you up. But conceptually, the HOTAS is very similar, and, it, and it's a it's a pretty natural uh, transition from one to the other. Between the, these MFDs, how they work, how the HOTAS works, you'll notice this flight stick is identical to, or close to it, to the uh, A-10. The throttle's different, but whatever. Um, and there's fewer, believe it or not, for a more electric jet than the Hog. There's actually less going on in the cockpit. There's fewer doohickeys and doobobs and, and shit. Uh, you don't have the uh, the CDU. You know, um, you have the upfront controls, which does a lot of the same kind of stuff. Um, but it's a pretty natural transition, and. I don't want to say the avionics and the F-16 are limited or primitive or any of that bullshit because they're they're sophisticated and they do the job, right? But compared to the UI and the kind of, I want to say, drill down you can get between the three MFDs and the, and the Hornet. You have MFD here, MFD here, then you have a third one, the AMPCD right here, the color. Um, the, the Hornet, to me, it feels like it takes a little more study time just a bit, you know, it's too, it, it offers more, uh, there's more, like, bells and whistles as far as the the UI, the interface, the MFDs, and stuff like that kind of, kind of things you can do, but that means more training time, right? Uh, I feel like if you want to get up and running just a little bit more quicker, uh, the F-16 is probably uh, maybe more for you, but if you want the full-featured thing, aside from the obvious, like, I can't land on a carrier and a Viper, and the Hornet doesn't have the HTS, so obviously, I, I would say the Hornet may be a little more flexible as far as uh, mission types. But if you want to specialize in seed, and you want to pop SAM sites, uh, you're not going to get better in DCS than the F-16 right now. Uh, five. So, um, yeah, so if you want naval ops, the choice is obvious. If you want seed, the choice is obvious. Uh, if you put those aside, though, um, I'd say that the F-16 feels a little more... I don't. It's not basic, and it's not bare bones. It's just a little simpler to operate. There's less to do in the cockpit. So some people may think that means it's less sophisticated. I may disagree. I think what it does, it allows you to do what I'm doing right now a little bit more. Keep your head up here. Think about how you're flying, what your tactics are. Think about the mission itself rather than head down here and like, okay, uh, hit this, hit this, hit this, whoa, we should, okay, uh, what, what's going on up here? Oh, poof, you know, and then you get, the Hornet's not that bad. It's not like it's like a crazy workload. Like I said, that plane, you hop in that thing and it feels like it has your back. It feels like it's working with you. Uh, it's got everything you need. You have to, you have to learn it, but it, it'll take care of business. Uh, all you have to do is like work with it a little bit. Um, as far as like actual performance, as far as like how many how many bombs it 
they can carry, like how many weapons stations and um, gun rounds and, and range and you know, all that uh, what we call wiki level performance differences. You guys can all look that up and determine, you know, maybe you just can't tolerate the uh, the fact that the Hornet can't, can't carry the HDS, you know? Um, yeah, that's up to you. I mean, people are like, which one should I pick? I mean, ultimately, if you have interest in both, eventually you should probably buy both, because it's interesting to have these comparisons. And it's interesting to have a buddy fly fly the other one. And you duke it out, and you can hash, you, know, you can figure out which one you prefer, which one you fight better in, because maybe... You know, unlike people actually in the service, we have the luxury of like, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, I feel like uh, I'm gonna fly the Hornet today. Uh, you, know, I'm, you know, I've had enough F-16. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly the Hornet. Uh, you know, we gonna fly the Harrier or the A-10. Or, you know, just you know, hop from airframe to airframe like it's nothing. You know, uh, it doesn't exactly work like that IRL, right? All right, so we got your radar contacts here. What are you? Yeah, the radar, I think, in the Hornet, maybe a little more full-featured. Excuse me. <coughs> uh, it's got a little more um, flexibility as far as air-to-air. -air. Oh, by the way, I do intend to create a tutorial for the F-16, right? Um, it's going to be... The intent is to do a very concise, very quick, maybe, hopefully under 45 minutes <laughs> concise. Only in DCS is 45 minutes concise, right? There we go. Alright, so I had some RWR, uh, what do we got, Sukhoi 30s, I don't like that, um, oh yeah, concise tutorial, right, so I'm going to, um, the idea is, uh, the audience for that, intended audience, is going to be people who have been flying DCS for a while, and just want to know how the, stand by. Um, I think most DCS players or people who are looking for a specific tutorial on a specific jet, most of the time they have they know how to fly a, a fake airplane and they know how to, uh, and they've probably flown the Hawk or the Hornet or both, or the Harrier for that matter, and they have a general idea how shit works. They want to know Falcon specific stuff like how the uh, how to set up the Hotas, what the buttons do how the UFC control works, how this works, what the, what the HUD does, what uh, pages are available in the MFD, how to work the targeting pod, how to work the radar, uh, how to employ the, uh, the little differences and how to employ the same weapons between aircraft, like the Mavericks in particular. Like there's little odds and ends between all of them that are just, just a little different. Um, you need to know that. Um, that kind of stuff, and I expect, to, I am shooting for half an hour probably, if I get it 20 minutes to 30 minutes, that'd be great. But, uh, like, you want to know how to use basic BVR shit. You want to learn the ACM modes. Um, you want to learn how to shoot a Maverick, drop a GBU-12, GBU, uh, how to drop a JDAM. Uh, CCIP, pretty, pre CCIP, I mean, no shit, that's, that's going to be basically the same from one plane to the next, right? What do we got? That's 29 spikes. Thirties, and they're closing hot fast. All right, so we got to deal with that. Let's go to Twiz. TMS right, unlock TMS right. Buddies, let's uh, before I squeeze this trigger, might be a good idea to make sure that they uh, they are in fact bandits. Dark 
Those are 30 spikes, I mean, yeah. That was a cluster on my part. I'm, I'm busy talking about like freaking. Getting jumped by freaking sukhois here. So I got hit. Where's my freaking countermeasures? Okay, another thing we need to study when we're looking, comparing an aircraft is the countermeasure suites and how to use them. Case in point, I just died. The only thing that really hurts the most is my pride. Yeah, I was hitting CMS and uh, my CMS button, like pump, 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 and um, nothing was coming out. Why is that? Manual, that's why. It's on standby. What's this? There we go. I didn't fence right. See what I mean? Like I said, if I were to do this IRLs, I'd probably end up dead. That's what I'm talking about. I do like that um, AOX call, like, hey, you're dead, continue to flow. Like, you know, I don't want to sit here and, like, go back to... Uh, start the whole damn thing all over again because I, I got tagged, right? Because that was a long flight, and you do not want to hear me um, ramble on about this shit a second time. Uh, why, am, why am I stuck in? No, that's why. Okay. Missile override mode was, was locked down. Yeah, so if I understand correctly, uh, that's how they do it in real life, right? Because it's not just a simulation like we have here in DCS. Um, they're burn they're flying real planes uh, with real maintenance requirements, burning real fuel on real time. Uh, and that ta range time is precious, right? So uh, you get dead. Um, it's like, well, you still have some training to do. You can still learn, you, you know. Uh, the same way we would get frustrated by having to fly back to Nellis or start from scratch. Um, IRL in training, like, okay, well, you're dead. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Um, do, you know what I mean? You, your, your goal is to learn from it. So if you have to reset the scenario every time you get tagged, you're wasting time and fuel, right? So I'm going to hit that uh, waypoint up here, and then we're going to turn left, and I'm going to go ahead down into the, uh, in 
into the targeting pod. And that sucks that I died. I'm really pissed off about it, and I'm going to think about what I did wrong. One, did not arm my countermeasures. Sweet. Stupid. Right? Two, uh, once I saw those radar contacts, I should have made that my priority. Uh, hey, look, they're closing. Talk to my flight. Get a, get a bunch of AMRAMs flying at them. Uh, put them in defensive posture. At that point, it was a BVR engagement, and uh, I let it get WVR, and that was no good. Uh, pretty bad, actually. <laughs> and then when I was w WVR, my dogfighting, I mean, I hit two of these dudes, but like, uh, cold comfort if you take a missile in the pipe yourself. So, um, uh, yeah, lesson learned. Um, also, I'm too busy talking to my audience. Hey guys, how's it going? Glad you're here. Um, but uh, that was educational. In this case, I think we've shown it as an example of what not to do. Speaking of which, don't drink and fly, kids. And second, Top Gun Maverick, Top Gun 2. What the hell is going on with that, right? Um, let's go to nav mode here because four miles. We'll go to AG mode uh, once we switch back to uh, once I uh, turn on I, uh, the uh, once I hit the IP. Um. Set back to uh, 60, 60 degrees per side, 120 degree sweep, two bar scan. Yeah, that air to air engagement was total shit. Uh, and I expected, because it's a red flag, uh, the fighter sweep to go sanitize that shit before I arrived. That did not happen, and I should not expect it. Alright. Master, I'm on. Air ground mode. Be. I think that's what I just did. No, I think I just hit snowplow mode. No, it's over there. Right. Either way, we got to get the targeting pod pointed onto that fan song. Here we go. Right. So let's uh, let's center it. C Z. Take it off of that. We're just going to go old school. I'm going to slew it. There we go. Get it. General idea. Down here. And which of these looks like... It looks like a fan song to me. Alright, so let's get this roll with it. Flight. Engage. No, no, no. I meant flight. Gauge. Oh yeah, <laughs> I bound bound active pause to my hotas because I was doing a tutorial. So I saw this to destroyed. I think that was a bit different uh, flight. All right, pickle. These are on. So to fire the laser, um, 
you uh, use first detent on the trigger. Smack. Uh, it didn't hit my target. Hang on a second. Did I make it a, a second major mistake? I think I probably did. Here's why. Misc. Laser. Okay, no, 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 they're correct. Six. Six. Enter. Okay, good. I guess my uh, bomb just fell short, actually, so let's circle around. To use corporate lingo. Let's circle back to that. Am I alone in just, like, absolutely hating corporate lingo? I, I don't think I am. Anyway. Uh, no, I think that was a good strike. Somebody got it. And, uh, I'm gonna hit that. Where's the earth shattering kaboom? There we go. Alright, so I got a lot of right aileron trim. Alright, so I'm out of bombs. That means it's time to rock and roll. There we go. Alright, buddy, you do that. I've mentioned this before, but uh, if you um, if you listen to the Fighter Pilot podcast, fantastic. If not, you definitely should. Uh, but there was a one of my favorite episodes was the uh, Wild Weasel one, and uh, there was a, a 16 guy talking about how they use the gun a lot, and that made me grin a little bit. I don't know if that's healthy, but it did. In on two, two got. Let's mark this guy here. Looks like there's another uh, surviving truck in there. Oh, it popped. Another contact here, that red spot. I know I'm cheating a little bit, but you gotta make concessions to reality here. Notably, or namely, the uh, my monitor. So, uh, yeah, I know. You purists out there. Well, you know what? There's a debate on that. Hang on, stand by. I gotta straight this bitch. Oh, that's a Zeus. Scud launchers and shit. Hang on, hang on, hang on. That looks like an S. Okay. Were those scuds or SA2 uh, launchers? They're not marked red, which means DCS probably thinks they're a. Uh, 
is treating them as um, uh, shit. What's the word I'm looking for? Non-combat units, just like scenery, basically. I got those launchers. Um, another thing I thought was cool uh, about that same episode was the difference. They talked about the difference between like uh, Navy kind of operational needs versus Air Force. It was kind of neat to hear the difference. Uh, Jello was talking about like uh, when the Navy goes in, they it's kind of short term. Like they'll punch a hole real quick through the IADs. Um, you know, for the strikers to go through and make their attack. Whereas, like, Air Force guys, uh, reportedly, that is a scud launcher. Um, maybe more, more inclined to do, uh, like, permanent damage. Like, think, think a little bit farther ahead. Like, okay, here's a SAM site. Um, if I'm Navy. I'm totally okay using a growler to shut it down just for this mission so my strike package can get through and hit what they gotta hit. You know, the Air Force is more like, that thing needs to die so it's not there tomorrow. Pontiac one. I'm not Pontiac one. I don't get it. I'm not dead. Oh, also, I'm not Pontiac one. <laughs> thing I, I have learned to love about the um, F-16. Uh, acceleration. Hmm. F-4s, huh? With all due respect, Winchester. All right, I can't do much else out here. Let's um, get home. Yeah, thought so. Okay. So, let's climb up. I know there's a better way to do this. Um, what I'm doing is going for fuel conserve, uh, so I put it in what I hope is about mill power and climbing up as quickly as possible. Trying to, not doing a good job at it. Um, incidentally, there's a. Uh,
Where's that cruise option? Yeah, okay. So, um, it's under development. So, cruise mode? What the hell? Somebody drop a nuke? Um, <laughs> cruise mode on the, um, in, on your, on your, uh, DED. Um, it tells you how high to fly, where to set your altitude and, uh, speed for max conserve. So if you ever end up in bingo like I am now with quite a distance to fly, it's a good thing to have, right? You know what? I might actually pull this off. But I won't be proud of it, that's for damn sure. Alright. This isn't horribly thrilling. It's kind of a nail-biter here for me. Um, just saying. Fuel state that low. Five minutes left to waypoint. Hoping that waypoint is the right one I need. Should have paid more attention to my flight plan, but yeah, it looks like that's actually the base. Yes. Right. Am I looking at it correctly? Yeah, okay, there's Nellis. Pucker, 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 pucker. I'm not gonna do an overhead break. I'm doing straight in. If there was any doubt. I might not even taxi to the parking area. Let's shut that off. I don't think this matters as far as fuel consumption is, is concerned, but uh, let's, shut, let's start shutting some stuff off here. 400 pounds. I'm telling you, I think that's... IRL, that would be, uh, somebody would talk to you about that, I'm sure. What's up, buddy? You've been here the whole time? What a, what a, what a pal. Why are you still carrying your bombs, huh? You guys too, huh? Alright, well, good on you. Good looking out. Do you have fuel left? Can I borrow some? One thing I do know is the F-16 glides like shit. Um, I think it's glide ratio maybe 0 .001. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it ain't good. Yeah, how much fuel do I got? Uh, I've got... Oh man, I'm on... Uh, 300 pounds left. Come on, gear down. Three hundred pounds, man. I got excess. You know, in other airplanes, that's actually quite a bit. How much did my Cherokee carry? Not my Cherokee, but the Cherokee I was turning in. Like what? I can't remember. A lot less. You know, despite the fly-by-wire, it actually feels pretty mushy, as it has been the whole time, because I'm going so damn slow. Wow, somebody, uh... Somebody did... Somebody landed. Somebody landed. Somebody else landed. Well, I guess I did better than my wingman did. They just augured. Well, that was, uh, that was dramatic.
So I'm going to call that a shitty mission. Um, I guess AI wingmen will just crash into the ground unless you give them the, uh, the order to... to land? I don't think that was like that before. What's up, Hornet Bros? So my buddies flew with me the whole way when I'm at, like, bingo Isimo fuel. And, um, I like to follow me so loyally straight into the ground. That'll make the news. So when do I get the mission complete message? So we hit we hit our target. Aside from the the dumbassery with the fuel, the botched air to air engagement, the uh, spending too much time on target strafing shit when I should have just gone home. Uh, my three wingmen just sea fitting into the ground uh, right over there for God knows whatever reason. Maybe they were just having a really bad day. Bad joke, sorry. Uh, but, uh, don't you know, we hit our target and we made it back. So, where's my mission complete message? 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 Maybe I've got to get back to the parking area. Can I come around the back of these things? Yeah. And even my slow ass uh, made it back before those guys did. Are those the A-10s? That would explain it. <laughs> hey! No offense, no offense. I love the hug. Hey, look, a fuel truck. You know what? That's a good pl that's a good thing to park next to. So I'm gonna park next to that guy, and then uh, I'm gonna call it. Hey, Duder. You have no idea how much I needed you back there. Alright, oh, it's time to call it. How many pounds of fuel did I land with? 200. Okay, that would be enough to, uh, you know, if I were in a Piper Cherokee, that would be a lot, so let's just call it good. And yeah, let's start shutting shit down. I can, uh, you can listen to my bullshit. Off with you. Off with you. That's a problem. Another mistake I found. My IFF has been off the whole time. I'm glad I didn't get shot. Um. I didn't go to nav mode. That should not have worked, but it did.
All right, that was a shit show. Uh, let's see what the mission briefing is going to tell us. DCCS has stopped unexpectedly. Wow, results 100. All right, mission success apparently according to this, but uh, my take on it is a little different. What did I kill? All right, so my Amram hit that Su-30. The other one I think hit the Bandit, but after somebody else did, so I didn't get credit for it. Um, I got uh, flat face radar, ground power unit on a truck, a couple of trucks, a couple of trucks, scud launch sites, Shilka, and a static scud, scud launcher. Show my victories. Um, six vehicles and uh, should be this. I don't know how it shows a kill on the uh, Sukhoi here, but not on my victories. It's, uh... Lame. Alright, whatever. Bronze Star. I'm not worthy. You know, I feel kind of dumb getting these. Like, I didn't do shit. I'm, I'm sitting in this chair at home. This is a real award for people who earn it, and uh, you know, I'm not one of those. Anyway, thanks for watching. Good hunting out there. Thanks for sticking with me this whole time. Um, I think I might keep up with this campaign because I'm learning a lot about what not to do. Later, guys.